my favourite story of the day because we're halfway through Fat Bear Week uh, and as always it's getting a ridiculous amount of attention. It's a little moment of joy as we navigate, uh, well, so many bleak stories. A million people voted in last year's online event, their choice of the most popular scales-breaking brown bear. Well, let me show you some of the live pictures from Alaska's Katmai National Park because uh, millions tune in to watch the bears jockeying for position for the best eating spots. Well, a little earlier on the programme, I spoke to the founder of this event, former ranger Mike Fitz. More than a million votes last year. And so far this year, we, uh, in the first four matches, we've already had more than 300,000 votes. I'm going to put up a picture of last year's winner, 747. I think I'm right in saying 1,400 pounds. I mean, in terms of how much weight they're putting on before hibernation, just take me through that. Yeah, brown bears hibernate in winter, so they don't eat, drink, urinate, or defecate while they're in the den. They survive on their fat reserves. So the fatter the bear before they go into the den, generally the better equipped they are to survive that period of time. And they'll lose about a third of their body weight during hibernation. Uh, that's the same for like a bear like 747, but, it, but it's, it's, it's especially important for uh, bears like uh, females with mothers with cubs who have to support not only their own survival, but the, uh, the safety and the, and the growth of their offspring. I'll come back to mothers in a moment, but a lot of interest and not surprising this one in terms of the chubby cub 806 Junior. I think that's uh, how it's tagged. Uh, I read in terms of body weight, he has increased nearly 7,000 percent since he was born a year ago. I mean, how much fish is that that he's eating? <laughs> well, it's a lot of mother's milk, uh, along with some fish later in the year. But yeah, when bear cub, brown bear cubs are born, they're born in midwinter, so in North America, usually end of January, early February, and they're born, they're only about one pound. Uh, but at this time of the year, a first year cub could weigh more than 70 pounds. So yeah, they do have uh, the, the fastest uh, growth rate of any uh, age class of bear. Now, you mentioned mothers. I mean, this competition, it doesn't separate gender or age or anything like that. That puts mothers like Holly, who's got a lot of attention because of uh, her colorings. Uh, a lot of people uh, watching out for her in this competition. But in terms of how it works, to actually to win this competition, is it simply weight that it's all about? It's not. Uh, it's it's a subjective competition. So we ask people to vote based on not only like body size and who they think got the fattest. But we also ask people to consider the stories because uh, each bear at Brooks River is an individual and faces its own challenges uh, to survive and thrive in this habitat. Uh, and it, of course, it's brought to us by the salmon and the rich salmon runs that uh, arrive at Brooks River every summer. Well, that was Mike Fitz. Uh, let me take you back to the live pictures. And just on the right hand side of the picture, you can see one of those brown bears just ambling around uh, very close to uh, all of those uh, feeding areas. Uh, just head to the BBC website as well. Where there's a fa fascinating read uh, about 747 Otis, all the rest of him, all the bears named. But uh, that competition, it lasts till October the 10th. And as you were hearing there from Mike, millions of people tuning in and watching every day. And uh, they expect to get to that million votes by the end of the competition. So uh, those some of the live pictures as, uh, as I say, we get halfway through Fat Bear Week.